Snooch to the nooch, everybody. No. <laughs> Not that nooch. Uh, this is Kevin Smith to my left. Scott Moser to my right. Fat Buds, Jason, Big Pimp, and Muse. And this is the last commentary track for an Askew Universe movie for Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Uh, about two, two and a half months after the movie opened. No, about two months after the movie. Yeah. Three. No, three is coming three. up on three. Um, the final installment in uh, what started as one movie became a trilogy and then became five. Uh... Off the top, right here, we got some appearances. That is uh, Amy, our secretary of VOSQ, Amy Noble, and that's my daughter, Harley Quinn, playing little baby Silent Bob. Hi, Harley. Yeah, she can't hear you, idiot. She will, though, one day when she watches it. Yeah, and she'll be like, who's, the, who's that guy talking to me? And I'll be like, that was your Uncle Jason. Bullshit. He disappeared. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that dude, Bullshit. one day he just went out into the desert and never came back. Um... Oh. John. Nooch to the nooch, everybody. No. <laughs> Not that nooch. Uh, this is Kevin Smith to my left. Scott Moser to my right. Fat Buds, Jason, Big Pimp, and Muse. And this is the last commentary track for an Askew Universe movie for Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Uh, about two, two and a half months after the movie opened. No, about two months after the movie. Yeah. Three. No, three is coming three. up on three. Um, the final installment in uh, what started as one movie became a trilogy and then became five. Uh... Off the top, right here, we got some appearances. That is uh, Amy, our secretary of VOSQ, Amy Noble, and that's my daughter, Harley Quinn, playing little baby Silent Bob. Hi, Harley. Yeah, she can't hear you, idiot. She will, though, one day when she watches this. Yeah, and she'll be like, who's, the, who's that guy talking to me? And I'll be like, that was your Uncle Jason. Bullshit. He disappeared. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that dude, Bullshit. one day he just went out into the desert and never came back. Um... Oh. John William, who played Coey London in Chasing Amy. I remember him. That's Ever Carradine, somebody we haven't worked with before, but I would love to work with again because I thought she was phenomenal. She was awesome. She was really quite good. Back in front of the Quick Stop. Back, a return to the Quick Stop. First time we've shot at the Quick Stop since Chasing Amy. Yep. Um, and the first time we go inside later on, it's the first time we've been inside the Quick Stop shooting for a movie since Clerks. Yep. Since the Although Clerks we did video. shoot there once for uh, John Pearson's show Split Screen when it was on IFC. There's a small baby. Baby saying fuck. Really saying this is a little fuck. baby saying fuck. No, that was all digitally done. I don't remember that baby's name, but he was a very well-behaved baby, whereas my baby was not well-behaved at all. Um, and and that guy, he was in Clerks, the dude walking out of the store. Yeah, he was that the, was the uh, uh, construction. The dude, you know, that star construction that star worker, contractor guy, the guy who was just was like that? a kind of a roofer. Listens to this, not as well. He was the roofer. He's in the seventies, right at the very beginning. He's walking out with his kid. He showed up while we were shooting. He we're like, <laughs> In there. He said, hi. I didn't see him since we shot Clark, so we threw him in there. He went and he grabbed his coat and his hat yep. again. It was pretty cool. Um, and those two cats, that's uh, Jake and Nick, yep. who played the kids. They were a fun bunch. Nick couldn't stop laughing. He uh, he really enjoyed Jay's performance. He just thought it was really funny that anyone would spend twenty million dollars on this <laughs> movie. This. He's just, just like couldn't make one of the most himself. inside movies ever made. Um, we we tried to bring Quick Stop as close to uh, it was when we were shooting there as possible. Hence the you know we are yes we're open we're still um, still open. Jeff Anderson Randall. playing Randall. Uh, Jeff just shot his own movie recently, mm-hmm. a movie called Now You Know. Um, but uh, this is the first time uh, he's been back since playing Randall at least since I guess the music videos we shot for mm-hmm. or you know the unless cartoon. you count the cartoon. Tune, of course, you do a fantastic job. Yeah, I would count it too. Um, Vinny Pereira, VSQ historian, the bald guy right there in the foreground buying cigarettes, which is a real inside joke because Vinny can't stand smoking. And um, Brian O'Holland, of course. Dante. Dante, and the man who's been in every movie we've ever made. And if you plan to shop with, let us know. Thanks was the sign. Faithfully recreated by you. By me, yeah. Somebody else had did it, and then I said, give me that, and I had to do it over again. But uh, not the original, because who knows where that is, you know, in a landfill somewhere. Those two cats coming in right now, uh, Brad in the foreground, or not in the midground, I should say, and Chris in the background. Brad and Chris, the guys who, who uh, do News Askew for us, the website nope. that I go to every day to find out what's going on in my life. Oh, that does it. 
Um, so this is uh, our most expensive movie to date, twenty million dollars. Twenty million bucks. What the fuck, Serpico? What we? But like every movie uh, we've ever done, it hasn't crossed. It made it to thirty million, and that was that. And there's your best friend from high school, Ernie O'Donnell. That is one of my nearest and dearest from high school, Ernest O'Donnell, who's been in a lot of pictures of ours. He was Rick Darris and Clerks, and he was the guy in Chasing Amy in the Ice Cream. Oh, wait, what's that? Wait a second. There's my oh, ass, God. boy. What's this God. represents the lowest moment in any Viewskew film to date. I don't know, that shit where a lot of chicks on the... Did boy. they like that? They loved oh, it. They wanted to eat this my ass That represented that. my least oh, finest hour. Way. So ashamed of that. Secret Stash, 35 Broad Street, Red Bank, New Jersey. You can get comics there and such things and whatnot. That's right. This is uh, this is the comic book store we actually uh, have in Red Bank, and it's called Jan and Silent Bob Secret Stash, but for the, for the purposes of the film, we call it Brody Secret Stash because our first appearance of Jason Lee returns as Brody the first time he's played the character since Mallrats and uh, with not much of a wardrobe chain except a change except for the fact that we put patches on a very similar looking jacket uh, on the elbows and that was because originally this sequence started with a longer scene where he was teaching a class in the comic book store so uh, EC the costume designer wanted to give him a more collegiate look um, but we wound, wound up nixing that scene right before we started shooting this sequence which was at the tail end of the whole shoot we went back to the end the night before we were going to shoot I didn't even get to see that that's going to be deleted scenes and DVD we, never, right? we didn't see we it because we didn't shoot it oh you didn't even shoot that no. Oh, no, no sir. Cut it. We were, you know, the movie was running long at that point. We had assembled like 60% of it, and mm-hmm. we knew that basically to add that scene, uh, we were just going to okay. put away over the top, that especially was the, nice the front th- side of the movie. That was the nice thing, too. Uh, while we were w- making the flick, which we shot predominantly out in Los Angeles um, at uh, CBS Rapid Studios, um, we were cutting at the same time. So when me and Mosher weren't making the flick or corralling Muse, <laughs> sitting on Muse, telling Muse to stop harassing girls on the set, we were actually cutting the picture. Look at I like this uh, this piece up here. Remember me and uh, Lee were doing this on set, and we said we had to throw this in the movie. Talk into the mic. Don't talk to me. I'm talking to the mic. But you keep turning to me. Right here, look. Right. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a little piece that kind of muse and um, and and uh, Lee would would vamp. Look at these morose motherfuckers, right? It's the return of Holden and the opening title music to Chasing Amy. We we brought that back. <laughs> Dave Perner. Dave music. Perner. That's right. Tuba Wonderful, it's called. Uh, yes, Affleck. Before the scandals. Uh, Affleck, who came out to work on the show for two days in a period where he was doing four movies back to back. He just finished Pearl Harbor shortly before that, and he w- he went out to do changing lanes and then he was finishing up changing lanes he started some of all fears and then he had to go back to Los Angeles to do a few days reshoot on Pearl Harbor and then came to us and he was very tired which kind of worked for the whole Holden look see he's got the 5 o'clock shadow because he didn't didn't have the the uh, Van Dyke going some people call it a goatee it's not it's Van Dyke goatee it's just the chin hair uh, he didn't have the Van Dyke going but uh, we had one made Patty the hair person had one made but we didn't we were afraid that it might look a little too fake up close and in, in uh, the close up so we just decided to go with the 5 o'clock shadow and the tired look that he brought with him then the next day was when he did the, the Ben and Matt stuff and we put the tanning lotion on him and cleaned him up we'll talk about that later on but uh, this set like all the sets on, on all our movies since uh, Chasing Amy uh, by Ratface Holtzman. Yep. Robert Ratface Holtzman. Um, Rat uh, said this is where Holden would be going years after Chase and Amy with his own company called Potzer's Inc. And all the, in addition to Ratface, all the graphics are done by Scott Purcell. Mm-hmm. The poop shoot, the nail cigarettes, all that stuff. This Anything, whole website. Yeah, the whole website's by. Well, no, that's not true. Um, Ming did the website. Oh. Ming did movie poop shoot. So even I can learn something. Yeah, from you know, the it's a good thing that you're here because there's something to pick up. Ming Chen, our brilliant web designer, um, did the movie poop shoot website. But Scott Purcell, not to be uh, undersold, did, you know, pretty much everything else. 
nails. Anytime you see something graphically in the movie or any of the other movies from Jason Amy forward, the nail cigarette design, the movie design, all that stuff is Scott Purcell. Oh, and Phantoms. Word, bitch. Phantoms like a motherfucker. What's up now? Uh, all right. Uh, Phantoms like a motherfucker. Is very funny line. Read the news. Get to chime in with their Great t- delivery. For example, we got a guy here I should say. Oh, ho. Both of you. Thank you. Get you with your shirt off. Yeah, yeah. What's up? You getting comfy? Lord. It's hot, dog. It's hot here. Yeah. Is it? You can get down your skivvies? <gasps> Finally, we used to videotape him, and now I start taking his gear off. There's finally camera. something worth seeing. The dude, there's no camera. And here he is. And sooner or later, you know the cock's going on the table. No doubt. <laughs> Slap it up there when you get bored of the movie. I, I'm a little disappointed that there's so many things we're missing, but this movie uh, moves. Yeah, it's very quick. Yeah, it, it kind of chugs along at a brisk little pace, which uh, is kind of nice because, you know, we always get tagged by people saying, like, oh, their movies take such a long time to get going. And this movie really didn't. Which is a big reason why we cut out that Brody scene. Yeah, the scripts to, to keep things kind of moving forward. And that, uh, let's go back to that fourth thing, because it still haunts me to this day. My least favorite mo- moment in any movie I've ever done. It supersedes the, the tit shot in All Rats with Joey. It's really kind of a, just the, I mean, I don't mind a fart joke. Like, I like a good fart joke. Though. Later on in the movie, there's a really great fart joke but this one was just seriously like asking my friend to drop his pants you just wanted to see my ass I've seen your ass so many times true, true. I mean I don't need the excuse that was a close up too you could see like little well, there was, little there was one ball on my ass yes and, and there's one take where you actually did the fruit basket and snapped yeah. the balls oh, back oh that was genius we might throw that on the DVD as an easter egg oh hell yeah <laughs> Because that's the, the kind of thing you want to celebrate Easter. <laughs> <laughs> that is. It's like, go hunting, people. Yeah, we did a bunch of these takes because mm-hmm. kept, you kept laughing, mm-hmm. fucking up. That's yeah. all on the cut stuff. If they click over to the cut sequences and the oh, yeah. gag reel, I put all that stuff in there. Nice. Of us laughing. How much fun we had. We had such a good shitload It was of actually, fun. it was a, yeah, it was a shitload of fun. We had a really good time making the movie. And I think that kind of shows when you watch the movie. Um, and it's a kind of a miracle that, um, Dimension gave us uh, $20 million to, yeah. to basically make the, the biggest inside film ever made. You know, maybe the biggest cult movie ever made be, because you have to have seen four other movies on a certain level to really enjoy the picture. I know we spent most of the time promoting the movie going, you don't have to see any of the other movies to enjoy this. You can walk in and enjoy this movie. No, it's bullshit. You really had to have seen four other movies to kind of get, get off on this. enjoyment. Otherwise, I mean, there's a whole, like, the, the plot's predicated, what little plot there is, is predicated on um, something that happened two movies ago. Mm-hmm. You know, them in the comic book. But the first uh, turn to camera, we did that a few times in this movie. Um, breaking the fourth wall, as they say. Yeah, it's one of the first times. The first time we've ever done yeah. it in the movie, and it's the first time in this movie. You don't even know calling us assholes on the internet to teenagers and guys who can't... This is, uh, a stop this is a, a chillingly brilliant performance on your behalf. Yeah. Oh, you, you were you. phenomenal. You rose to the challenge. You rose beyond the challenge. I mean, you, you, you were the king, dude. Oh, it was all yeah, hanging. Right? Now that it's over, we could say it was all hanging on you, and had you <laughs> fucked it up, we'd be, all be fucking <laughs> Oh, we told you that. Sweep in the, the get <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. It was no secret. Every day we were browbeating this motherfucker. Oh, no. Um, we should point out before we go back to praising Muse and sucking his balls a little bit more. Jim Venable did the music score. Yeah. Man, is it fucking brilliant! Jim Venable from me did uh, the Powerpuff Girls. He had done the Clerks animated series, which is where we met him. And, and uh, Scott came up with the idea. Scott said uh, he, Howard Shore was going to be doing the Lord of the Rings score, and we could have uh, bent his elbow a little bit yeah. and said, "Come on, Howard, fit us in." But um, at the same time, Dave Mendel in the background. At the same time. Um, it felt like this was a big cartoon of a movie, and it yeah. really needed a big cartoon of a score. So Jim was the likely choice. Scott said, "Let's ask Jim Venable." George Carlin. George Carlin. George Carlin. And what thanks is so the obviously um, not California. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> They're supposed to be uh, somewhere on the road to California at this point, and, and uh, we're supposed to be, I guess, New Jersey or something. But good lord, that is very much California. 
Yeah. That was the tough part, shooting the road movie in Los Angeles and about, like, what, 50 miles within Los Angeles? Yeah. Yep. Outside of Los Angeles. And um, finding places that look like other parts of the country. But uh, it was kind of cost prohibitive to, to shoot it in Jersey, particularly when we needed, like, a soundstage. And we started, I mean, we started shooting so late. We started on, like, January, so mm. it would have been cold. We needed the weather. We tit out there. Yeah. Although it's November right now, and it's not that bad out there. Yeah. Enough with the weather. Let's go back to uh, Muse. So you were a king, dude. You were. I'm still scratched my head to this day. It, it's it, it's astounding how fucking good you are in this movie. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Don't look at me when you're talking. Talk into the mic. So? Yeah. You think so, man? If you look at me, you gotta turn your mouth. Like think this. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. You are you kidding me? You carry this whole picture. If you don't work, the whole movie doesn't work. And. Um, <laughs> well, um, he works. <laughs> yeah, he does work. That was one. Of the, this is one of the first things we shot, wasn't it? Yeah, this was like the second day. Yeah, God, that was funny watching yeah. him do that. Having to explain, like George, when you go down, like freeze, open your mouth, drop your jaw as low as you can, just go completely wide, and then go down. And he he really captured it. Oh, who was that? Carrie, mm, Carrie Fisher, Fisher your one-time arch nemesis. Oh, yeah, she slapped me down. She did. There's a Buddy Christ on the dashboard. Buddy Christ, graffiti designs, view askew, product, product, product. J and Bob Secret Stash, visit us. Yes. 35 Broad Street, Red Bank, or see us on the web, www.viewaskew.com. Yes, Carrie Fisher, uh, we're shooting the sequence, and uh, Muse is being his typical Muse self and, and flirting with her and saying, like, this is a great movie. I get to um lightsaber fight with Luke Skywalker and I'm gonna go down on um, Prison Leia. No, and then she finally I I I was uh, on the insert truck, you know, which is the truck that's pulling this car that's shooting for the sequence for the sequences the shots that I'm not in. And uh, this is all going on between him and her, and he's doing his Mac and hard on her routine. And then I said, uh, boy, it's it's a little tough, isn't it? And she said, it's just why does he have to be so patronizing? No, remember what it was? It was because she came out of her trailer with just a t-shirt on mm -hmm. and uh, no pants, and it was just she was in her panties. Yeah. And I and I said, oh, I think she, I said that to her. I was like, I know you wore that shirt with no pants, no pants. So uh, you know your panties would be showing when I went down there. And that's when she got pissed. And yeah, she did get mad. And she had a face on, and I said, boy, it's hard, isn't it, dealing with them over the walkie-talkie and she said he's just it's just that why is he so patronizing and everybody you could hear a pin drop on the set because everyone's like oh my god she's wigging out on him and she said uh what did she said i know he's not gonna fuck me i know he doesn't really want to fuck me why does he talk that way she's like it reminds me of affleck which i thought was pretty funny and you were all like i'm not the only kid in prison part of the uh part of the um uh, points of her contract, though, was that we couldn't make any Princess Leia reference no. in the movie. I don't think there's anything about the commentary track, so I think we're okay. Um, Carmen uh, Llewellyn Lee, one-time wife of Jason Lee, and um, and a bunch of other cats. We call it. What was the dude's name? The Buffy guy. Now you're gonna catch me, and I'm gonna. I know. I mean, us. and with and he was such a great guy yeah. as well. Um, oh, what was his name? You remember? You watched Buffy. Um, I know his name's Ryan and Buffy. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, let's call him by his character uh -huh. name. Oh, okay. Um, he was. They were all great, and 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 really uh, brought you know those these characters to life. That voice right there, that's Mark Hamill doing uh, the voice of the Scooby-like dog. They passed out. Great. What do we do with them now? Let's cut out their kidneys and sell the black market. I feel bad that I feel, I feel bad. I'm sure he's now. just like, why don't you just fucking going, say nothing at all yeah, instead of really? going on for five minutes about how you can't fucking oh, remember me. me half naked. Yes, there was you. I'm going to cover up all my tattoos. That sucked. With more weight on you, too. You were a little heavier when we shot Ooh. the movie. I mean, I'm no one to talk. I was fucking ten times heavier, but... You uh, you were a little uh, bulked up, yeah. not in a bad way either. You finally looked healthy, as oh, opposed to like a Walking Dead. Pimp. Well, yeah. I mean, there's pimp and then there's limp. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, you, yeah, I thought you looked good in the movie, but you were very self-conscious, of, particularly in a shot coming up here when we were typing on the Internet. You were like, look at my turkey neck boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fat. And you weren't fat at all. You finally looked... Look like a man, for God's sakes, instead of the little girl that you are. There it is. He was like, look at my turkey neck moves. They both, in fact, Motherfucker. We're missing shit left and right. We should do it. too fast. There's too much stuff It is really. It's unbelievable how fast this is. Um... The uh, you are the ball lickers. all the internet stuff. You people explain. You are the ones who are the ball lickers. Yeah, you tell the story. Me and Kevin were in uh, Red Bank. We were walking across the street to the pharmacy, and uh, Kevin walked in front of a car, and the car beeped at him, and was like asshole. And Kevin just kept walking. When he got on the sidewalk, he looked at me, turned around, and was like, "You are an asshole." And I said. They're laughing. He's like, "What?" I was like, "Dude, you waited till he was about two miles down the road." <laughs> the car was halfway to the mall at that point, and it was just <laughs> such a delayed reaction. Where I was like, "You're an asshole," and then it just grew from there. I grew from there. It was like, "No, you are the one who are the <laughs> asshole. Who is the one? You are the one who is the asshole." And we Meanwhile, he's so already hard. in New York. That did that went on. That joke went on for days. You were looking at us. What the hell are they doing? Because we were laughing our balls off. Oh, look at right here. Hey. Comes the big first on screen smooch. Yeah. Uh, And uh, this, uh, of course, uh, unless you've been living under a rock for the last uh, three or four years, is Shannon Elizabeth. Look at that kissing, though, man. Tell me, girls just. Star of American Pie and Scary Movie and. Tom Katz. Leave that kiss, though. And uh, 13 Ghosts and recently American Pie 2. Um, yeah, look at that. Look look at Just, you. You were so shy about kissing, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not your real boner, I should point out. No, yeah. Not at all. Big prosthetic oh, under yeah. there. Um, and you know that ain't real right there because my shit ain't like that. Your shit ain't what? Like, like, oh, like oh, hell no. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't have came so quick. Um, Shannon, you were very shy about kissing Shannon. Oh, uh, let me make fun of me because every time I was done kissing, I'd come over and be like, what's up, man? Exactly. You would kiss the girl, and then as soon as we were like cut, you would race to the other side of the sound stage and talk to the nearest guy. Like Jason Lee, you're like, what's up, Lee? And we'd all be like, get over there and make some pillow talk. You just fucking swap spit with her. Because you guys really kissed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not saying that you guys were in love. But you really, I mean, there were tongues waggling at each other. and I was all smooth and soft and you were, just sucking on lips. And you were um, down in fucking, what are those things? You know those bands? Oh, oh yes. Altoids. Yeah. Ever before the sequel. This is Farrah's music. More girls, more sexy yeah. girls. That yeah. one in the middle is dead sexy. Yeah. Um, the tall one, uh, who you've never seen before, uh, is my wife. That's Jen, mother of the little girl who was in the beginning of the movie, played Baby Silent Bob. Dude, um, the other two, of course, Ali Larder from uh, such films as um, Varsity Blues and uh, and uh, what's that picture where everyone's dying? Final Destination. Yeah. And um, and uh, of course uh, Eliza Dushku. Um, who's she playing, Buffy? The bad slayer, Faith. The bad, the dark slayer, if you will. And uh, she was also in the cheerleading picture as well. Bring it on. There you go. Um, she was in True Lies. She was, yeah, she started way back in True Lies. She played uh, Arnie's kid. But uh, they make up our girl gang. Allie was the last one to join. The first one on board was, uh, well, Jen, because she muscled me into it. I gave her the script to read, and she said, I want to be in it, because she heard everyone else was coming back and stuff. And I thought she'd want to play something like Baby Silent Bob, or Baby Silent Bob's mom, rather. <laughs> or Baby Silent Bob. That'd be kind of funny. I mean, we could use all the jokes we could get. But uh, she wanted to know, I want to be one of the girl gang, which was, uh, I, you know, inside, I'm like, never. But, you know, outside, I was like, anything you want, honey. But she did a great job. She did a very good job. Uh, but she was the first on. Shannon came on, and... Uh, then uh, Eliza and then Allie and then Allie and I had to do some rewrites for Eliza and Allie because there was originally like they all a scene where they're all lezzing out 
in the hotel except for uh, Justice. The three girls are. But Eliza had just done a, a lesbian sequence for something, 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 something. That picture, uh, Soul Survivors. And she didn't want to do it again because she's got a Mormon grandmother or something like that. So uh, she uh, asked if she could avoid that. And I said, all right. And then I rewrote it. So um, it was pretty much Jen and Allie were supposed to be the couple. But that kind of got trimmed out in the yeah, it's not in the editing. That. You'll see it in all the cut sequences. But, um, but yeah, we kind of trimmed that out. And if we had left it in, I think it would have made that whole GLAD controversy uh, a lot less uh, volatile than, than it was for the two minutes that it was. And not because it was so like, hey, look, what a, what a wonderful and accurate, <laughs> yeah. honest depiction of lesbians. But because of some of the cut stuff, like there's a sequence later on where the, the girls are in their leather suits and they're about to walk into the diamond exchange. And Shannon says, you're, you're so gay. Um, that was one of the points that they uh, glad objected to because we're maintaining that gay was a negative thing or mm-hmm. and using it as a negative term. But really, there was more to it. Which you'll see in a cut sequence. Mm-hmm. I should explain that later. But we should point out right now the brilliant Sean, Sean William Scott, mm-hmm. um, who was phenomenal. Amazing. Sean, of course, from American Pie and also Final Destination and then Last Summer Evolution. And yeah, we dying. Yeah, he's phenomenal. He so it was Sean's idea to do the braces and the wig. He wanted to do uh, funny hair and, and funny teeth. Of course. I said go nuts. Of course. Of course. Um... Sean uh, was a native of the Eden Prairie area of Minnesota. Where we shot Mallrats. Where we shot Mallrats and said that he has a framed Mallrats poster. Um, which I, th- I said I thought I was the only one with a framed Mallrats poster in the world. So uh, he was quite happy to be in the movie. It was easy to get people to jump on for cameos mm-hmm. and whatnot in the movie this time around. I mean, not like we never... Not I remember like, that uh, dude's name. It's Mark Blucas. <laughs> Mark Blucas. Good call, man. Fred was played by Mark Blucas. God, you've just been sitting here trying to remember. I'm <laughs> like, I, I ain't going down like that. Um, you're, uh, you're pretty powerful throwing a dude out of a moving van. Oh, no, no. I'm strong as fuck. That was, a, that was a really nice shot that was actually abbreviated for time. But there's nice panning the landscape and then on to them. Oh, and is that the latest scene with the sheep? Or should we just that is the there. It's in there, yeah. There? It's in there. All the cut stuff. Oh, that uh, shot of me, what was it done? Like, how long afterwards? So we didn't shoot the... these. We shot Shannon and you this day, but we didn't shoot me until the end of the shoot. Four weeks later, I yeah. think. Way down the road. It's amazing. Mm. Movie magic, folks. Yep. Um, I thought Shannon did phenomenally. Yep. A lot of people going in um, on the website were like, why are you casting her? She, isn't she just the girl that took her blouse off in American Pie? No. I mean, well, she, she did, but no, she was. She came through like a champ. She, she. I thought she was incredibly sweet and brought warmth to the character. And, and there's a real performance in there. You know, it's not. She made you believe that she could actually fall in love, fall in love with this dickhead for like oh, no on. explicable reason. Um, the glasses, though, that was her idea, and uh, that was a little kind of kooky, actory thing. She said, her name's Justice, and Justice is blind. And I said, and? And she said, well, I want to wear glasses. And I said, oh, all right. I didn't want to fight her on it. And I like girls in glasses. I think it's kind of sexy. Yeah, it was a, I remember keeping in the way, though. Remember, uh, yeah, oh, keeping it was, images in the glasses. Uh, the the cameras. cinematography department hated it. Yeah. Because you were constantly picking up reflections of lights and, and uh, flags and... Ugh, it was terrible. In the midst of all these effects, we should bring up uh, Joe Grossberg. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Listen to me. Oh, uh, yeah. Jesus loves little children. Joe Grossberg, a big Hard. part of Jay and Bob uh, Strike Back because there are so many digital effects in the movie. Um, he's like, our effects supervisor um, who delivered like a champ yeah he did an amazing job and we added shots like on a daily basis mm-hmm. the job started out at like 
75 shots and we went up to almost 280. It was kind of like um, the first three minutes of uh, Phantom Menace. Basically. Um, there were so, there's, yeah, we did very minimal CG we had in the beginning. Yeah. And boy, it just kind of. It just ballooned every day. Because we would say things like, can we do a shot where like a bullet hits real close to our heads in the cave, me and Jay? And he'd be like, sure. And he did it all. Um, but while we're talking about that and the look of the film, which we should point out, I mean, maybe this isn't the scene to do it because <laughs> it doesn't really showcase how good the movie looks, the wood panel then. But uh, this is our, I think, and, and it seems like a lot of people agreed, was our best looking movie to date. Yep. And uh, shot by Jamie Anderson. Yep. Um, Jamie, who. who um, what up, Jamie? We, big props to Jamie Anderson, who. Uh, really kind of uh, helped a brother stretch his wings, visually speaking. Um, and Jamie shot stuff like uh, Gross Point Blank. Yep. And Small Soldiers. And, and The Gift. The Gift and Piranha. Piranha. He and did he, Hollywood Boulevard. did Hollywood Boulevard. Yes. Jamie started as a DP many, many years ago in the Corman camp shooting Piranha on Hollywood Boulevard and then took about 16 years off to be a camera operator mm -hmm. and then came back 16 years later and he operated for people like Storaro yeah. and Tak Fujimoto yeah. and then uh, went back to being a DP yeah. and now we got him and uh, we're going to keep him he's a good old guy, a good old dog <laughs> Him, I don't like you talking the, about his age, though. Yeah. And don't Billy Clemenger. being called yeah. an old dog. Clemenger loves being called an old dog. He was our Clemenger cameraman. Clemenger was a camera operator. Yeah, he didn't mind being called an old dog. But and, uh, uh, Jamie, he's very sensitive about his age. And he yeah. hates dogs, which I don't know if I should bring up here. But, but uh, the fact that he kept calling Jay a whippersnapper. Yeah. I mean, always. <laughs> um, and the, the gaffer, we should also mention Dave Morton. Dave Morton, who did a phenomenal job, did particularly job. Um, later on when you the, when you look at that time sequence. The more stay in the time sequence. The more stay in the time sequence. That's Dave's light design and phenomenal stuff. Um, a lot of people ask, is Muse wearing a wig? <coughs> no. No, that's Muse's hair. Hell yeah. That's all real. That's after three inches getting cut off, too. Yeah. Took Most people out. always ask, what is she preparing underneath? Uh, she was preparing a chili dog. I was going to throw him out myself. We needed Brent Justice. He was our patsy, remember? We'll just find someone else. It got quiet. Yeah. <laughs> like after that chili dog. Contemplating a chili it. dog. Well, I want to go pay. All right, me and Mosier will hold the fort. Hurry back, though. Yeah, because you'll miss a lot of time. stuff. We'll talk about you in your absence. Um, this was a scene that, when extended, had the, so lots of lesbian Which they actually included activity. in the TV spots. Yeah. If you see the TV spots, they put a lot of the kissing. Um, my wife and Allie, Jen and Allie, make it out. But, yeah, we trimmed it out after, like, maybe the first or second test screen. Yeah. And uh, pretty much just for time. Yeah. Just to keep things moving. Now that he's gone, I mean, he was okay. He was all right. Was all I mean, right. you know, not for nothing, but... I mean, you know, how he, many time, different ways can you say cock? Exactly. You know, once you get an Academy Award. Truly, truly. I yeah. mean, you know, you just want to boost him up and yeah, get exactly. positive feedback while he's in the room. But yeah. let's be honest, I mean, we could have slotted almost anybody into that exactly. role. Um... The Bee Gees. Bee Gees. First appearance in a VSK movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they talk about it a lot, too. <laughs> they're like, in the pantheon of things we've accomplished, um, there's Saturday Night Fever, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Arts Club Band, and our first appearance in a VSK movie. I saw that and they, they added it to their behind the music, behind the music. <laughs> right. right after things went bad things went bad things when things start <laughs> getting good then it's just like and also coming up things turn around for the better <laughs> <laughs> we got our song it's Jay and Silent Bob that was smashing <laughs> suddenly the Bee Gees are British um Oh, am I too close? I like that. Just close like that. Thing. I like being as close to the mic as possible. <laughs> Just all intimate. Uh, I'm I'm about to laugh right there when I push him away. That when we cut to the wide. But if we'd stayed in the close, you'd see me laugh because uh, he just kind of. Uh, took that little bit to to the next level on that take where he just shoved his uh, cheek into mine. Face and I said, get as close in. to me as possible, and he put his cheek on mine and was singing into my face. Good. 
maybe they're parking. Maybe. This is actually, we're actually driving at this point. You can see yeah. the reflection on the wind, windshield. Unfortunately, most of the shot was wasted because you couldn't really see off the car. Provasic. Provasic, where'd we shoot those? Valencia or no? Uh, pretty much near Valencia. Near Valencia. Spain? Valencia, Spain. Yeah, we actually, we <laughs> couldn't find a big cement building. <laughs> it was really tough to find a corporate plaza. <laughs> like, wow. Easy tigers. Well, there's a little ADR there, Easy Tigress. Kind of sticks out like a sort of Automated dialogue replacement. Mm. I learned that I was watching the Forrest Gump DVD and they talk about that. About ADR? Yeah. They actually, you know, say what it Use means. The term. Yeah. See, I these commentary tracks can be very informative. Not ours, but no. others. But we can steal from other people's and then relay it to you. We shot at this this little corporate park for a week. A week, and it was uh, it was pretty chilly for California. Yeah, it was very cold. Yeah, people lie to you and tell you like, oh, it's always seventy degrees there. Horse shit. That was that was very cool that we had heaters out. We had big. He- we had yeah. a lot of heaters, and the propane would die out. Mm-hmm. And we created a fortress, a fire. We called it. Um, to to heat people, to heat all the above the line people. I hate to say that, but it's true. It's we true. didn't really, yeah, we didn't really heat the crew. Um, the crew was so busy working, they were yeah. generating their own body heat. <clears throat> um, this sequence got cut a little bit for the MPAA because I, I guess now we can talk about it. Originally, this movie received an NC-17. Yeah, um, a few too many. Um, they, I, it became very clear the MPA is uncomfortable with man-on-man sex. Yeah, they uh, anytime there was a reference to it or anything very graphic, they they kind of freak out. So uh, we got an NC-17. It took us about three passes to get down to an R, I think. We whittled a couple of things out, but you can see them all in the deleted section. Yeah, they're on the section. cut stuff. But that uh, you'll see the longer version of the, the clit and the cut stuff. He goes on a little bit more. Go. Um, the, the ninja masks were, um, were written into the script um, because I thought it would be kind of cute, but also it really helped to hide the fact that we weren't doing that. The stunts. The stunts. <laughs> I mean, this is us here. Yeah. Oh, are um, you sure? I mean, it was pretty daring that you guys would try this. I just yeah. want to say that now. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it took guts. I remember having to psych myself up to run across the parking lot. I, as we cut away, I fall. I, mean, yeah, I trip over, over him and I fell. But you got back up. I did. and, and You got back up. I turned it into a bit as yeah. well. But, uh, that was amazing back. for all of us who saw it. Um, there's a, another return, um, not just Brody from All Rats, but also the... The grappling gun, and that is the original grappling gun. Yep. And Lisa, our, our prop person, um, was so mad that when she finally got that grappling gun, it was falling apart and didn't work. And yep. she, so she had to work on it and get it up to snuff. Not us. Stunt guys. Stunt guys. Uh, we had two excellent stunt Amazing guys. Amazing stunt guys. Uh, ben Jensen yep. was, was a Jay, and, uh, and Matt, Matt was me. Oh, uh, Matt, Matt's last name escapes me at this point. Uh, but they were phenomenal. They're the they guys amazing. that hit the wall as well later on in the movie. Did an amazing job doubling. These, there are no doubles here, ladies and gentlemen. This is all. Oh, this is all the stuff. ladies. All the ladies. Um, easy design the costume off of uh, uh, the Black Widow's outfit from the comic books. Um, Marvel Comics, to be exact. It's kind of a take on that. This is all music by Jim Venable. Oh, of course, Jim Venable. Um, um, what a, a really kind of nice shot, and, and you know, I, I think some people thought we did that just to show off their asses. And in many be, ways, we did. They, we did. They'd be right. They'd be absolutely correct. Yeah, my lady. Is, my lady's got a bit of a business going on here. <laughs> you know, a better husband would give her a little more to do in that shot. <laughs> it was cold, though. I like the little, the alley fondling the box bit. Um, I, I thought that was very sexy. So we concluded that. Even when people were like, hey, man, what's the point? Cut it out. I said, no, let's leave it in. It's kind of no. nice. Um, Allie, Allie's kind of performance uh, didn't suffer, but, I mean, she kind of got trimmed down the most out yeah. of all the girls. But her stuff was, uh, the stuff that I rewrote for her was kind of superfluous. Yeah. Anyway, the call came late in the process, came right before we started shooting, so it was the easiest stuff to cut, unfortunately. And ultimately, but, once we started testing and everything, we realized that it was all about Jay and Bob. Uh, and yeah, no, at the moment we were off screen, the, the, the test audience would, audiences would kind of leave us for a little while. So uh, it became about, like, keep them on screen as much as possible. 
while you were gone, we said nothing but good things about you. Yeah. We did. No, no, no. Singing your praises, dude. We said the stuff that would have made you turn red. You would have blushed. That's the second time you go, ooh, in the movie. Yeah. Um, there's a something. There's a misspelling. Yeah, break glass. As yeah, B R A K E K E. As yeah. in like the stop, the break in your car, as opposed to B R E A K, B R E A K. Yeah. Who did that? Uh, that would be the art department. Raph Face. Raph Face always has a, 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 a kind of egregious Good spelling eye, area bad error per spelling. Uh, per movie. Last time it was Centennial. Yeah. On the Dogma banner. This time it was Break Glass. Make wonderful stuff. Not always can, you can't always count on them for spelling. Booyah. Um, this is the furthest I think anyone's ever gone for a fart joke. This whole sequence coming up. There's a lot of two days of shooting, twelve, um, C, twelve to thirteen CGI shots. Um, I think we I think we should be in the, the Guinness Book of World Records. You know, I'm waiting for that Guinness call, but it's yet to come. It's all it's all who you know. It's all political over again. It is. Fucking hell. Um these of course more CGI beams were added. The first few though that were show up are actual real laser beams. The ones in the close ups are all practicals mm -hmm. and then we just added some additional. of these are practicals here. Yeah. Like the last those, two. The last two. Last two or three. Eliza, she loves to grab those boobies in that shot. Now she gets ready to do the flip, which she doesn't really do. No. Fair of course fair. the girls didn't awesome. do their own flips. Um, but uh, the people who did do the flips were quite great. Yeah, they did them very well. Um, and of course, their names escape me. Yeah, everyone's your best friend when you're making the movie, and yeah. then afterwards, you don't remember anybody's name. So many, and then they're sitting on the commentary waiting. Yeah, they're going like, "Here he comes." He's gonna say my name. Recognition, and uh, we just totally flake out. And um, but the girl <clears> who <throat> does uh, Allie's flips. Mm hmm. What was her name? See, so just don't bring I it know, that way. But I got I got to point her out. Yeah. Uh, she, you know, she does the wall walk. Yeah. Um, she was Mystique and she uh, was Mystique in the X Men movie. Yeah. She, I mean, every time you see Mystique fighting, that that was not what's her name. It's, no. It was the girl's name we can't remember. Who <laughs> was tremendous? I think Shannon's devil was Shauna. Shauna, that's right. Good, uh, good. Well, and she remembered. was she was a she was Cameron Diaz's uh, double in some of Charlie's Angels. Mm -hmm. We had some big, big people. We had, we had some big doubles on yeah. this picture. We had people the best done doubles stuff. that money could buy. See, there what a long way to go. All that CGI, all just to make a fart joke. Um, but no apologies. That fart joke I'm proud of. That's a, Unlike know, the one at the start of the movie. You earn it. I earn, yeah, well, you earn it. You go a long joke. way for it. You just went for it. Um, I thought that was a, a, a well... Produced action sequence right there. It was. It was exciting. My lady can drive, <laughs> bitch. My lady can drive, bitch. Yeah, no. That's right. She knows how to drive a car. Kaboom, you little stoner fucks. Um, it's kind of madcap movie. It's a comic book of a movie, isn't it? Yeah, it's very comic book. In fact, parts of it. Cartoonish. In fact. The parts coming up, including the monkey, were all taken from a comic book called Chasing Dogma, a four-issue miniseries that we had done uh, before Dogma came out that uh, yeah. bridged Chasing Amy and Dogma. It took Jay and Silent Bob from the, when they left in Chasing Amy and went to, uh, to uh, Pittsburgh. Well, in the movie, though, it's not Pittsburgh. It's Chicago. Chicago. In Dogma, McHenry, Illinois. And we took all the, uh, I took all the, the Suzanne storyline and put it. There's in the a movie. monkey on a horse. Yeah, if you, an if ape you on freeze a horse. that sequence real quickly, too, you'll see a monkey comes out of the flower pot. Yeah. Even though he didn't monkey come out, out of the, of the flower pot. That took an entire day to shoot uh, plates. Plates of, uh, we took 12 hours and shot like mice, birds, and then they comped them all together for that exciting little animal stampede. That cop was Bob Panetta, who was the shipman in Dogma. Sometimes he was the shipman. Sometimes he wasn't. The shipman was a few different people. He was mostly the, the shipman. Golgothan. He did the majority of the shipman work. Don't fucking. I'm take not. That I'm, that I'm from not Bob. taking anything from Bob, but Jesus. you know, there were, you got to give credit to the other people. I got stuffed in that shit shoot. I know. And had a hard time breathing. Oh, watch yeah. this. Here it is. This is this is a performance, ladies and gentlemen. The sad thing is that he, this man won't get any nominations this year for this sequence alone. Because that would be the Oscar. Look at the pathos. Austin! 
I mean, that's pain. He's sad. Just. Uh, He's sad. He lost uh, the girl he just met. Uh, there's a whole bunch of cut stuff, which you'll see in the cut sequence, which yeah. introduces Will and Ollie. But and that being said, this is the first time we see Will Ferrell in the movie. The brilliant Will the Ferrell. The genius. The absolute Will genius Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell, I highly recommend having Will Ferrell in a movie, um, if for no other reason. Or just over to your house. Or just over to your house. But at least on the movie set, just shoot tons of, just turn a camera on him and shoot. Because uh, it's the stuff that you wind up, you love the most while you're making the movie. Yeah. doesn't make it into the movie. But you'll cry. Someone referred to him as the Jar Jar Banks of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I totally disagree with that. Nah, that's not true at all. He's more like the Boba Fett, if you ask me. He's the guy that, like, in years to come, people will be like, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Remember. remember Will and Holly? That's John Gordon, our Miramax executive. Mm-hmm. John Gordon, who, uh, without whom there would probably be no James Bob Strike nope. Back. He ushered us through the minefield of taking a movie from the Miramax side over to Dimension. There's Ratface, the rat guy in the, the corner in the back. The Remember, flag. he was in Dogma. He was like, hey, math, all right, math, peace. Hey, this guy gets okay, his next math, nap. peace. Why? Because we may very well be dealing with the two most dangerous men on the planet. There they are. Here we see her. This is the best looking shot right here. Here it is. Best yeah. looking shot in any movie we've ever done. Beautiful. And, you know, we didn't really do anything. It's just no. using nature. But Jamie made it look m much more beautiful than it was. Rat brought in that broken down car. We brought down the car because we thought we might have a weather problem. Yeah, we thought we'd have to do the It was going to be blank, so we brought in this rusted old car, and we were going to build it into like a lean-to so we would thank, be able to shoot in the thank rain. Thank God you're here to remember this shit. I wouldn't have been there if the weather cast, if the weather report was better. We would have never brought it in. Yeah, but it, as it turns out, it looks yeah. nice. And this is Tango. This is Tango, who plays Suzanne in the movie. Tango, uh, a very, very talented simian. Yep. Um, who, uh, who kind of grew up on our movie. Yeah. By the end of the picture, she didn't want to do anything. No. She was like, this she's, is, fuck this. She's like, this is not the caliber of film I want to be working yeah, on. Yeah, really. She's like, bring she's me like, over to... Give me gorillas in the mist. Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. Because our guys, Mike and Mike... Mike and Mike. What was the company called? Oh, shit. <laughs> Thank God you're here, man. The guys are just like, they're going to say it. They're going to say it. Oh, well, fuck. Mike and Mike, the two guys who ran the company, um, Animals Unlimited? I think it was Animals Unlimited. I think it was Animals, Animals Unlimited. Unlimited. Hey, Jeff's back. Um, Vince Guastini doing those awesome ape masks, as well as all the other prosthetics in the movie. All these apes and this brain are, um, and whatnot. But all these apes belong to Apes Unlimited, and they are under the aegis of Mike and Mike. Yeah. This is a big digital shop by Matt World. They built the whole city behind it. And this was it. We had this on up on a giant crane. This is all practical. And we went to almost the same beach. We went to pretty much the same beach in Malibu to reshoot this. And then we... As Planet of the Apes. Yeah. The real Planet of the Apes, not the fake Tim Burton Planet of the Apes. And then Matt World digitally sort of recreated the digital, the clunky digital zoom at the end of the movie, too. Yeah. To get as close as possible. Yeah. I, we should point out that little speech of yours, which is quite brilliant. What's that? Your little... Uh, your little paranoid, the monkey won't, sp we won't spank the monkey, and the monkey will spank us. And then you work yourself into a frenzy. Yeah, we had to come back. Only and, uh, those as smart as me. <laughs> and we did that in ADR. We kept building, we kept cutting that sequence down, so we had to figure out a new voice. Here comes action. another cameo. Wow. John Stewart, the very talented, very funny John Stewart. What a stretch we did thinking to put him as a newscaster. That was a <laughs> it big did. stretch on We really kind of, it took a brain trust to yeah. come up with this idea. <laughs> um, he was fun. He was there for he was great. half a day, and boy, yeah. he had a good time, him and Will. And you can see on the cut se stuff sequence later, you know, yeah. flip over to the to the extras on the disc uh, there's a big old scene with him and and Will and, and how they just I let them go I just yeah. let them kind of make up dialogue as they went because I knew we were only using tiny pieces mm. but they just sat there and played and some were funny hysterical. stuff yeah they were really funny all the backgrounds this was the one time we got to the set and the set we had built it was late in the process and I think everyone was tired and maybe you know had given up caring yes and uh, the set was not it was a wall yeah it wasn't good 
So we shot the whole thing in front of a blue screen. Yeah, and then we shot all these background plates. All these background plates came in later on. And uh, added them in. I mean, that would make it one of the most expensive shoots, <laughs> sequences in the it was movie. One of, it, was, it was up there. Yeah. It was more expensive than some stuff to do all these shots. Or any other clitties, please exercise extreme Quick stop in color. <laughs> Quick stop. It's weird, man. In seven years, we returned and or never got away, one might say. We've never really we quite grown as filmmakers. It. No. No. Kept me, we just keep making the same fucking movie over and over again. It's kind of like redressing an ugly mannequin. Yeah. Or maybe not. No, I, I, mean, I don't know. Stretch there. I was just, he told me to talk a lot. And that's the And result. you're filling in space, I know. We need uh, Affleck to make fun of. We can talk about him and as if he's here. Yeah. Girls in underpants. It's the kind of picture it was, ladies and gentlemen. Girls parading around in le- tight leather and in underpants. Some people say, how do you go from dogma to this? And I say... I got nothing for him. I say, actually, this movie kind of came about as a result of Dogma because we received so much fucking bullshit over Dogma, so much death black, threats, death threats, the hate mail. You it's know, just, you're not gonna get a death threat over chicks and pants. No, nobody's gonna threaten no. you for that. But uh, it did. It kind of came about because of that. She only, you can almost see her boob there. It was distressing. How far up she went with that shirt. What are you going to do? It's Eliza, man. She's, uh, she's, she's on the a, edge. She's a hellcat. Um, but yeah, this movie came about because of Dogma. It was just the desire to do something completely non controversial and just something fun and light. Make a funny movie. Yep, have fun. With no issues, no big issues. No. And then? And then the <laughs> simian man relationship. <laughs> exactly. That no one wanted to see. There was there was um there was a shot at one point where we first meet the monkey where uh she started digging through your pockets. She starts digging through my pockets and she puts her head under my shirt. Yeah. And I you know, played it off. Made a little bit of it. Yeah, you made a bit. And we had it in the movie it's a cute shot, but uh, in the test screening audiences uh you hated that moment. Because it, it was sort of inferred that there was blowjobs. Yeah, they it blow inferred jobs. that like our friendship was more than just platonic. <laughs> like they were like, I don't like when Bob treats the monkey like a whore. Yeah. And which I you know, it takes a dirty mind to see it that yeah, way. Exactly. That's Judd Nelson as the sheriff. Judd Nelson coming back. In the, that location John Bender. And that location is Vasquez Rocks outside of L.A. where they shot... Uh, that very famous episode of Star, Star Trek, Trek. Um, Arena, I believe it's called. And that's why the diner, which is a diner you can rent, it's called the Arena Diner. And uh, you can rent that diner and put it wherever you want. So and we and thought this would be a... Ratface said, what if we put it at the diner in front of the wreck? In wreck, cut it the Arena Diner. And, and, and we said... Talk like a man. And then if you look at the cop cars, said, okay. it's hard to see, but it's Sleestack County. Yes. A little nod to uh, the world of Sid and Marty Croft. Marshall, Will, and Holly. Is That's Will right. Farrell. Marshall, Will, and Holly. If you remember Land of the Lost, Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition. Um, I like this bit. It's really dumb, but boy, do I like it. And uh, he really made it work. Uh, Will did. Yep. Uh, Will plays dumb incredibly well. Yeah. Will does that very well, and the other thing he's brilliant at is he's the king of the unfinished thought. Yep. Where he'll say something like, can we get that? Is that? And then just stop. Funny, funny style. I don't have to tell you. you know. No, no, I was there. Yeah. I've, I've already agreed with you time after time. I recognize an ape if I saw one, okay? Uh, it was fun having Judd there for the for the day or two that he was there. Yeah, he had uh, some fun John Hughes stories. Most people don't recognize him. Yeah, most, most people, people don't. Um, most people say, "Hey, I thought Judd Nelson was supposed to be in the movie. You get cut out." Well, hell no, he's there. You are free to leave, sir. It's all over it. Look at that! Look at that reaction. Yeah, he's so like what? You know, he's surprised. Yeah, he's got range. Apologies for detaining you and your unorthodox, but constitutionally. That was uh, kind of unplanned. Yeah, it was hard to really roll with the the ape kind of as a wild animal, as a mind. 
of its own and uh Quite like muse and doesn't mm. and will only sort of obey or pay attention for short periods of time so this was kind of a long shot and the dialogue was like you know it was a couple minutes worth of stuff and she just got tired of doing it and started acting up but then we just sort of left it in that way and it worked good looking hat well, it's not mine. Yeah. I'll be damned if it doesn't go Rented. Yeah, rental. All right, gang. It's amazing what you can rent, you know. When the guys come out with a monkey, we'll... Hats. Dignity. Porn. Shit, I said you love the cock. <laughs> that hero sandwich side. Yeah, the, the cock like like you've never seen before. All these gunshots are CG. All uh, the ones whizzing by us, of course, and and also the uh, the hits yes. and the muzzle flash. All oh, those CGI. This is a, what's that secret that way that's shot? Slow the shutter. Slow the shutter. Sh- down. Slow the shutter down. It's our Saving Private Ryan moment. Yeah. Very brief. This tunnel was built, was on the stage. It's yeah, the, the inside was was on the stage. The outside, they built the wall and the little hole there on location. It's not my ass. This is Stunt Guy's Stunt ass. Guy. I remember uh, addressing it to Gary Jensen, our brilliant stunt coordinator. Do you think I should get in there because my my ass is much bigger than his? And he said nobody will ever notice. I don't think anyone noticed the difference. Not no, even. my ass? <laughs> no. I mean, now that you brought it up. I'm now. People will be looking damn close. But, uh. It's the magic of Hollywood, though. It is. And, you know, the Gibson has a stun ass. I yeah, think. exactly. No, Stallone does. I think Gibson does his own ass shots, if I remember my yeah. Notting Hill correctly. The sheriff. You've taught me so much. <laughs> you liked Will, didn't you? Yeah, he's awesome. He's funny. He had, um, his hair was a wacky color because he had just been doing um, Zoolander at Zoolander. the same time. Well, this asshole. It was orangey. Let's go back well, it was kind of yellow from uh-huh. Zoolander and then tried to dye it back to a somewhat natural color and turned into this orangey affair. Big CG shot Big there. Matt World, another Matt World uh, shot. Put the monkey down and this whole tunnel up. was basically built on the stage and Let's big blue it. screen. I think even a film uh, idiot, someone who didn't know much, would probably figure out that this wasn't real. <laughs> but the blue ass sky behind us and, and the fall. He loves the cock. On your knees. Lots of lot of cock talk in this picture. Yeah, there's a real penis thing going on. There is. And basically, we just spend the movie insisting others are gay and, and ducking being gay and then claiming enjoy the we're act gay. of sexual of man on man yeah. sex. Wow, these guys are good, very good. But that's the kind of picture it was. I have to do a commentary track for this movie because there's, there's unlike Mallrats, there was nothing to explain. Like Mallrats commentary track, you sit yeah. around talking about how like, well, this is what happened, why the picture didn't work. Yeah. Um, nice shot on the wall there. Uh, Chasing Amy, of course, is tons of say dogma as well. This one, I mean, you know. It's a dick and fart joke movie. It's really it's, a, it's a, the most expensive dick and fart joke movie ever made. No, I don't know about that, but... What would that be? It's the most expensive dick and fart joke movie we've ever made. It's true. I'm sure they've spent lots more. American Pie 2 is kind of a dick and fart joke movie. Hey, the they probably spent... Well, I know they spent way more than we did. Uh, this movie uh, got to $30 million theatrically, kind of like Dogma. Yep. We have a glass ceiling of thirty million bucks. That's so about as high as we go. We're the thirty million dollar guys. If you want a picture that'll make thirty million bucks, come to us. No more, and no we'll less. make it make thirty million. Oh, I sh- this is your big part, dude. Yeah, as we're Son of Bob speaks, first time in the movie. Enough not to stick my hand. Kind of screams. Really. Yeah, doesn't really. Son of Bob screams, bellows, if you will. Spits in my face. It's, it'll get a little spittle in your face. Uh, Don't just point like. Um, this is there's no CG in this shot. That's all natural no. location. Oh, natural pyramid lake. Yeah, we're pretty up there. 
It was cold. Cold, pretty. Uh, that was another day we had heaters. Yeah. California, man, don't let anyone lie to you about it being the sunshine state, although I believe that's Florida. But people will tell you that it's very warm out there, and uh, it, it gets seasonal as well. And chilly. fucking say it already! A lot of screen time for, for you and me, Muse. Um, it kind of makes sense because it's called Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, I guess, but... I think uh, I think uh, we carried it well. You guys both both did a good job. Don't don't undercut yourself, man. Don't yes, don't think yes. the the skinny guy was the. Oh, the well, so what? I'm the fat guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he's the skinny guy. Yeah, I, I, it was surprising that the movie was carried as well as it was by by uh, two characters that have always been kind of uh, little comedy ninjas run in, make jokes, get out of there quick. But you can, the, when you watch when people watch the deleted scenes, I think they'll see all the stuff that was built in just in case that wasn't the case, just in case the audience wasn't really wanting to watch, you know, just you guys mm, um, the entire time. We had extra stuff other scenes built in so if we can build a story that's not every second of it you guys but mm-hmm. that's what the people wanted that's what they wanted when we test screened the movie the time that we took out from that first test screening until the final release was about 15 minutes 20 minutes maybe yeah like between 15 and 20 and uh, it was all just non Jay and Bob stuff really except for a scene that would have happened right here which is which in the cut is sequences just it was naughty it was naughty we had to cut that out for the MPAA Tracy Morgan Tracy coming up here. Morgan. Phenomenal performance. Great guy. Wonderful um, human being. Great work ethic. Yeah. Came in, just brought his A game, ready to play, happy to be there. Funny guy. He had a. Did you see Saturday Night Live by any chance this weekend? Uh-uh. He has a sketch where he plays this dude, Brian Fellows, um, who's a, a, an animal enthusiast. Uh-huh. And they're like, Brian Fellows doesn't have any sort of doctor's degree in regards to animals, just a dude who's a fan of animals. Yeah. And he just constantly says, I'm Brian Fellows. That's, that's pretty much the whole sketch. And then somebody will bring in a goat, and they're like, this is a, this is a, mount, you know, a, a blah, 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 mountain goat or something. He goes, that goat looks weird. <laughs> He's staring at me. <laughs> he goes, I want to stab that goat in the eyes. I'm Brian Fellows. Stop calling us names on the Internet. I was so bereft of anything to say that we were recapping Saturday Night Live him last week. But uh, he's a funny guy, funny guy. Put him in your movie, ladies and gentlemen. He'll deliver. Standing next to him is Scotty Props. Scotty Props. He worked in our props department. And uh, and uh, um, Tracy wanted somebody standing next to him to kind of uh, jaw with, so we threw Scott in Sort of another silent yeah. uh, partner. Mm-hmm. My business out here. This is the first thing we ever shot. Yes, the very first thing on the movie. First time I was kind of back in the director's chair since uh, Dogma, essentially. Mm-hmm. Kind of weird, a year or more had gone by, maybe two years. Oh, nope. two years at least, I think. Yep. So there's a long post on Dogma. Yeah, this is the first thing we shot was the Comet Go. And then we and shot then her the same next day. day. Same day. Later we came on back day. and did this. And that uh, lot right there, CBS Radford, um, in uh, Los Angeles, well, in, in, in the valley part of Los mm-hmm. Angeles. Um, Studio City. Studio City, to be more precise, um, is where we shot the movie. That's where, and that's where we posted the movie, where we had our offices and whatnot. We just kind of... It's on at Radford Avenue, but uh, Rad changed the sign. It's over at Jules Asner's shoulder. It says Radford Avenue. Yeah, a little homage to himself. And that Miramax gate, which uh, I, I wish they had a studio because they could have put it up. They didn't. No, nah, Miramax doesn't have a studio. Might as well. She was uncomfortable with that stuff, remember? We shot the stuff. She wouldn't really see She didn't know what was it. going on behind her, but she just heard everyone chuckling. So, so she, she was assumed the worst. And then uh, when she saw the movie, she was okay with it. This is a pretty decent spit take by Shannon. This is the first Shannon time we likes shot doing with the Shannon. comedy, too. She's, uh, she's into the little comedic bits as well. Diedrich Bader. Diedrich is so the man. Very funny guy. You gotta play this just right. Um, 
who uh, I, I guess most people know from the Drew Carey show. I know him from um, Office Space. Office Space. He was fan- fantastic. But we knew him even before that. We were huge fans of Beverly, Beverly Hills, Hillbill- Hills. Beverly Hillbillies movie. Played Jethro. Which we, I remember we rented one summer and we had it for a week. <laughs> and the movie's not that good, but no. the stuff with him, he's brilliant in it. And, and the and stuff the with the ape is fantastic. The ape bowling. Yeah, the ape bowling really got you. Uh, Those are our ball. stunt guys, Ben and Matt. Not the other Ben and Matt. That dude's wearing a Walt Flanagan's dog t-shirt in the background. Um, to the right of us would have been our bungalow, our first bungalow there. That's where, where our first editing, editing room was. Yeah. And then we moved down to the bungalow. There's a lot of crew. <clears throat> a lot of crew in the shot. background. Who are the guys you know? Dave and Drew, right? Yeah, Drew. They're pushing the giant yeah. vegetables and the giant yeah, shopping Drew, cart. Yeah. Make you a deal. Those are craft service dudes. Take off if you let us go. <laughs> Contrary to what you believe, not everyone in the industry is um, homosexual. We I called him Gordon. We did call him Gordon. John Gordon. You watch and jerk off. Um, shoot, not a lot. Do you like it? It was awesome. It really was. I you mean, uh, you wish Jersey had a lot. Because, uh, and we almost did, I guess, at one point, but that fell through. But uh, you can't beat it. You know, it's just, I mean, you know, I, I, people kind of... Uh, and I'm one of them. Will bitch about Los Angeles, but they really—it's a film-friendly town. It's an easy I mean, place to shoot a movie. An incredibly easy place to shoot a movie. It's what they're there for. No other reason, really. Great crews. Wonderful crew. They're probably the best crew we've ever had on a movie, and 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 certainly not to take away from any other crew we've ever had. But no. but they were incredibly friendly and happy, and it was just a really good group all around. Yeah. A little Reservoir, Reservoir Dogs, Dogs homage. There's Taylor in the background. Walk by there. Our intrepid hair guru. Like a shot in your fucking mouth, you gay bitch. <laughs> Pretty harsh. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why Glad got all mad. Oh, I watch it. I. But right here, this is why Glad shouldn't be mad. I'm like, yeah, I was ready to suck your dick. I'm ready it. to do it now. Yeah, the hero of the movie supposed to be straight. Hey, there's Scott Mosier. That's right. Yeah, Mosier. Thank you. Scotty Mo popping in there, bringing us thunder. I only work with A-list actors. That's why I, I held out for the Ben and Matt scene. This, uh, this, was, um, this was a scene that was in every incarnation of the script. Um, it was much bigger. Much bigger. I mean, in the earlier drafts of the movie, Ben and Matt were central characters from the get-go. Mm-hmm. Like, they kind of set the plot in motion. But uh, in later drafts, as, as it became clear that that wouldn't have been the movie we wanted to make, or Matty Damon, for that matter, wanted to make, um, we, we trimmed it down to what it, what it is now. Less is more. Yeah, I mean, it works great now. It works great as like a single kind of like little sketch moment in the movie. It's a good surprise, good third act surprise. Uh, that, I should point out that dude who um, was pouring Gus's coffees, Bob Shrek. Yep. Or uh, my editor over at Green Arrow. And uh, early on, the dude delivering pizza, that was Joe Casada. Yep. Uh, editor in chief at Marvel Comics. Yep. So, who I worked with on Daredevil, drew my Daredevil run. So get to know me. And I'll put you in a picture. <laughs> Buddy's right here. You can just stand there and react. Don't say anything. This, this is a good little bit right here. All right, people. That's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of nice because it gave the, the, your character a little self-aware moment. Yeah. Hey, fuck off, will you? All right. That you understood the difference between yeah. what's not funny and <laughs> what is funny. Exactly. <laughs> Coming up here is Jim McLaughlin, our good friend over at Wizard Magazine. Right there. Not there. There. Jim McLaughlin. He was, I think he was a little nervous about playing that role. He yeah. wouldn't look down the barrel of the camera. He was looking all over the place. We'll get the scared of the camera. camera. Yeah. This, well, to me, was some people's most favorite Scott, part, is that they actually brought the real guy back yeah. from, from Goodwill Hunting. Scott Winter, I believe. Yep. Yes. From he He's on Oz. He's on Oz, but he was in Goodwill Hunting playing yeah. Clark, and he came back to do it. I remember that class. Um, we tried to build the bar to kind of look like the bar. There's elements of There's it. Elements the of the flag. <laughs> <laughs> the color scheme is pretty close. Yeah. But uh, we would have had to go to Toronto to duplicate yeah, the Yeah, exactly. Bar. Why bother? But it became uh, 
I just read Vickers, so I'm up on inherited wealth hunting. I just never finished that thought. I don't know. What I was gonna that say. was a little bit that we yeah. kind of worked on while we were shooting the scene. Us leaving the frame because we knew that those guys back. really <laughs> couldn't carry it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they did it once, but that was a long time ago. It worked incredibly well too. I always thought it was a joke that nobody would see until it was on video. But yeah. um, the first test screening, people picked up on people. Watch here you guy. have. <laughs> What's yeah, the guy dude back there. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good bit of acting in the background. Um, yeah, it was something they picked up on in the test screening, which yeah. I thought was, uh, you know, told the story of, of how those guys' time is over. <laughs> yeah, nobody really cares about the Ben and Matt show anymore. It's all about Jay and Bob. Yeah, it's very telling. A little CGI there. They put uh, Scott's face onto the stunt. Yeah, they pulled it. They put his face on the stunt guy. Pulled they did out a little wire. Phantom Menace. That's yeah. What we call it. Seven on our heads. We're on the cutting edge, right on the forefront oh, for this picture. Yeah. Go figure. A lot of the things we revolutionized are being used in uh, episode two. Love it, Phantom, go! Great delivery by Ben on that. I wasn't with Oker today. Ha ha. Um. Gus Van Sant, we should point out, point out, was in that scene, too. Absolutely. Gus came out and Wes. was happy oh. to do it. Well, Wes is coming up. Oh, oh God. God. Yeah, way to tip that. For the guy who hasn't, hasn't seen, seen the, the movie. movie. Wes who? What? There's a Wes coming? Yeah. Um, Shannon, oh. first Shannon return to a View Scoop picture since Small Rats. Hadn't seen her in six years when we made this. Yep. And uh, you, you wouldn't have thought a day went by. A picture in the background I always felt was our homage to Selma, who couldn't make it into the picture. But in the background of that hallway, it looks like uh, a Frida. Frida Kahlo. Mm. Fucking Miramax, cut! Fucking Miramax. That's Mosier's fucking that was my mantra. Oh my. <laughs> 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 fucking Miramax. There's Wes, the West that fucking Muse tipped the hat on. Wes Craven. Wonderful guy. Dude who I felt so bad. We had him come in very early that day. And um, yeah. he sat around most of the day until we finally got to a sequence. But uh, he, he was a champ. And that dude, there was one of the mics, of uh, Monkey Mike, was, yeah, in, was the in the foreground there. there. The, the, he's that, also in Planet of the Apes. He's also in Planet of the Apes? Yeah, he's in Planet of the Apes when they put the, the ape in the, the little Planet crap. of the Apes? Yeah, the new one. Um, that's, the, that's the... Hey, there's Daredevil. Yeah. You'll see him in the cut sequence early later on in the, on the other disc. Um... The, uh, the, 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 God, what was I going to say? Oh, the dude that muses, like, do something to yeah. That's Monkey Mike. Monkey Mike. Moon Raper. Monkey Moon Raper, Mike. yeah. Boy, we thought about it. There was originally an idea to have, like, tons of posters around the Miramax lot yeah. of Ben Affleck movies. Um, and then ultimately we just went with Moon Raper. I mean, once you get to Moon Raper, you can't. It's kind of the You can't improve on it. This was shot fairly early on, if I remember the this sequence. This is the first week. First week. We needed a couple of, we needed, you know, young male Hollywood, and this is what happened. We did this all, like, within the span of a week. Jason Jersey Biggs and uh, James, I'm not sure where he's from, Vanderbeek. A uh, couple of guys who came out and turned in tremendous work. Two dudes that never met each other until that day, but worked like a comedy team. I thought it was amazing. It was like Crosby and Hope and Crosby. Hope and Crosby. In many ways, it was. They should do some road pictures. They I ought think to work that together. That would, be, uh, that would be a winner. They should go to like you know some place like to Morocco, Edie, Morocco, or on the road to North Carolina, yep. where they shoot Dawson's Creek. Yeah, um, they, they, two number one, like Ben and Matt, were uh, champs to come in and kind of poke fun at themselves yep. for our benefit. But uh, I seem to have a great time doing so as they, well. They, they had a great time. We did it all in the span of a day. Yeah. No, a day and a half. Day and a half. Day and a half. But, uh, yeah, they, they were really great guys. I'd never met either. Well, I met Jason once before mm -hmm. we did the he came shoot. In. And um, James I met on the set that day. He flew in from Dawson's Creek to do it. I mean, it was that kind of picture, man, where people just kind of left the left TV show, other and things, and came to us. But I mean, we're happy to do so. Would move shit around to get out to us. It was kind of flattering. Wait a minute. Um, there's a Jackie Brown poster in the background. Yeah, but a bigger shout out to fucking Air Bud. <laughs> <laughs> why? Do you remember why? 
Uh, no, I just remember I it was, do. Like, it was a clearance issue. Yeah. We couldn't, I mean, there's tons of Miramax posters we could have chosen, but we would have had to have get gotten the um, sign off. Because nobody the protects the image rights of dogs. Yeah, nobody's doing exactly. that. Exactly. Nobody's looking out for air, but, nobody's but we couldn't have put like a Pulp Fiction poster up because then we would have had actors. we would have had to have the actors sign off. You know, like animals or objects. So those two posters, Air Bud and and the Jackie Brown poster, has no image. No, there's no image of an actor in the Jackie Brown poster, and Air Bud is just a just a dog and nobody's looking out for him poor exploited animal look at my turkey neck moves look at my turkey neck I love you this is so ape what's with the weird gay you left there I, yeah, it's hysterical. Mm. Um, this is a, another moment where I, I should have, Glad should have let me go. I address homophobia in the movie. That's the problem. I mean, the Glad when Glad went against, it came out against the movie, they maintained that you know it was a joke at the expense of the gay community, and I disagree completely. A lot of gay jokes in the movie, none at the expense of the gay community. How do you know he doesn't smoke monkey pole, huh? But uh, that's it for my politics. Yeah, go for fuck. Yeah, I'm fuck sorry. I really fucking ate beating. I got a bit didactic there for a minute. Forgot which picture we were talking about and thought I was on Dogma for a minute. An issue laden movie. Looks Somebody's, like she's taking a dump. Yeah, you? people say that. Yeah, people say that. I'm like, we would never sink that low. <laughs> oh yeah, we just couldn't afford that CGI <laughs> shot. This is if we'd have held on a little longer and had the CGI CGI come in and kind of drop some turds, that would have been yeah. awesome. Uh, I don't know how the boys would have taken to that though. To like, it's, isn't it enough we made fun of ourselves? You had to have the monkey shit on us. Have a simian take a dump on me? <laughs> Real bad. Without even telling me. Well, great. There's a few moments in the movie where you laugh. And it's real, and that was one of them. Where you're like, uh, oh, yeah. we beat their ass bad, real bad. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, we'll wait out here uh, till you clean up. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We're on once the home the, Once the monkey's in the air shaft. Uh, that's an old saying, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, in Hollywood, they say when the monkey's in the air shaft, you're, <laughs> you're in the home stretch. That dude looks like James Brolin in the background, doesn't he? You know. <laughs> Give him a mustache. That's James Brolin in I'm the hotel. T- I hear you. You know. That was what we were trying. I'm looking to- for Barbara Streisand in the background of the shot because that that is James Brolin. I'm convinced. Yet another cameo. <laughs> First time you see us in these silly outfits. Yeah. We got to play superheroes, Blunt Man and Chronic. Uh, yeah. Early, early on, before it was Jane and Bob Strike Back, there was an idea about doing an entire Blunt Man and Chronic movie. We didn't go that route. Hey, he's back. Chris, Chris Rock. Rock. A newcomer, Jamie Kennedy. Jamie Not Kennedy. newcomer in general. Yeah, I mean, Jamie knows Jamie Kennedy is the dude from Scream, amongst other things, but first time in one of our flicks. Um, but Rock, who... Uh, Does your daddy know that you give a nigga his coffee? Wrote that line. <laughs> Not my line. His line. But I was happy to include it in the movie. Taste the booger flavor. I know it's in there. Also his taste the booger flavor. Rock came on for a day. Most of the cats who returned came on for a day. I mean, Ben was there for two days. Matt was there for one day. Rock was there for one day. Jamie was there for one day. Jamie Kennedy. Jason Lee was there for three or four days. Three or four days. He came back to Jersey too. Yeah. Won't you executive produce me a latte? The Krakenated. Okay. This is Lee returning his banky. So Lee, like Affleck, plays two roles in the movie. I mean, that's why it is kind of like a real cult film. I mean, you got You have to have seen the other movies. Otherwise, if you're somebody who's never seen any one of our flicks, you sit down and watch this, and suddenly Jason Lee comes back, but wearing a different outfit, wouldn't you be confused? Suddenly has a beard? It's like in a world of CGI and makeup, it's <laughs> yeah. like, what's a beard? Exactly. <laughs> what are you, in vaudeville? That's Joe uh, Reitman. That's Shannon's boyfriend. Shannon Elizabeth's boyfriend. He's a really good guy. Yep. But uh, it would seem that um, he's been in every Shannon Elizabeth movie I've, I've ever laid eyes on. He's in Tomcats, he's in American Pie 2, he's in this. I wonder if he made it into 13 Ghosts. Oh. Man, this must have sent him back a I don't know, I thought they were trapped in a house. I haven't seen him. Yeah, I haven't seen him. He might have been a ghost, I don't know. Look at this. Um, 
has a pimp entrance though. The big the doors, doors yeah. the the fanfare, mm-hmm. the um, the big exciting moment, the uh, rat face, the blunt the cave, cave, of course, the blunt cave modeled after uh, '60s uh, TV Batman's Bat Cave. A lot of these, um, I was supposed to. He was going to tell me the names of all these things, and I forgot to call him back. But a lot of these um, little bleepers and We're in little machines are in things. various 60s science fiction television shows that I'm sure you're all dying to know, and I don't have the information. Yeah, but keen eyes will will know. I, yeah, can, I can I can tell you the Rocketeer's rocket pack is hanging yes. up in the background. It's a game. If I tell you, then you yeah. the game's over. You got to bring something. Yeah, it's interactive. Fuck. Um. The blunt reactor looks like Batman's reactor from from the '60s yeah. Batman. Um, yeah, it's weird because there's a you know what follows if you've seen the movie and I don't want to spoil it for you, but a lightsaber fight in the Batcave is kind of weird. The guys are pretty badass. Paul Dini, creator of the character Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn, writer, a um, oh, multiple Emmy-winning writer of uh, the Batman and Superman animated series. What are we waiting for? Action! That was the line that started most of the TV spots. In the background over there to the left, you see the Silent Bob costume from Mallrats. Yep. That's a little uh, Batman homage there. So he hangs up, you know, he's got the Robin costume hanging up. And I don't need to tell you who that is. Hey, kids. I mean, we, we did at one point, because the uh, first two test screenings we had, nobody knew who the hell that was. Um, and so then we said, you know what? That scene will play a lot better. If We're like, you know what? We've made a movie out. where we can just flat out put it in giant letters. Exactly. Hey, kids, it's Mark Hamill. It was the kind of picture you can get away with it on, so we threw that up on screen. Mark, uh, a true champion. People say that must have been it for you, huh? We're working with uh, Mark Hamill because I'm supposed to be such a Star Wars fan. And, and I said, yeah, it really is. It was it. It was it. It was. So he I'm was done. amazing. He was great. He uh, he's a storyteller and a half. Unlike yeah. Harry and what I hear Harrison Ford is like, he loves to talk about Star yeah. Wars. Lucas gonna sue somebody. There was a George Lucas never did sue us. We should give a, a huge shout out to Rick McCallum. Yeah. Uh, George uh, Lucas's producer who uh, who uh, gave us kind of carte blanche with sounds. Technology. I mean, well, let's put it this way. We never got sued. We never got sued. So we want to thank anyone who didn't sue us. Yeah. Who might have had the opportunity. Over the actual sounds were actually built from scratch mm-hmm. by Tom Myers, our sound designer. And you'll hear the, the, the if you listen to the sound subtly, um, Kevin's has the sort of water of a bong. He built in, like, bong water sounds. And Mark's has a vibrator. It's basically yeah. a play on a vibrator. Mark's goes, ee. Yeah. Um, and he built all the sounds for the whole sequence. Tom Myers, ladies and gentlemen. You know, not for nothing, you could say anything you want about me and what I've done or haven't done in film, but I, you know, got to have a lightsaber fight. You did get to have a lightsaber fight with, with Luke, Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. Here's a pimp entrance right here. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, the double bong. This was huge in, in the audience screenings that I saw. Through. Balls. Bong. <laughs> Good lord. Um, you kind of see the Bluntmobile there off to the side, which you can now see at Jane Silent Bob's Secret Stash, 35 Broad Street, Red Bank, New yeah. Jersey, along with many other props. Oh, it's just... Lots of shit to buy. This is Muse Bit. While we were in rehearsals, because we did have to rehearse that sword fighting, and we did, we put in quite a few hours practicing our little moves. Um, I completely ignored my, my little sword fight. I mean, you know... That was pretty good. There's nothing to add, but wow. Yeah, exactly. But we rehearsed those for a while. There's Hillary, our script supervisor in the back, Hillary Momberger. Um, we, while we were rehearsing that, uh, Muse said, like, what if I turn off my bong and I take a hit off it? And I said, that's brilliant. And that was another thing. We asked Gooseberg, Joe Grossberg, hey, man, can yeah. we do that? And he said, absolutely. This, is another this shot thing right there is another kind of addition. wasn't scripted. That was a Paul Dini suggestion. Paul Dini said, uh... You're gonna have him shoot movies. Going, why don't you do the 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 uh, hard boiled looking yeah. through the looking through the open wound thing? And I said, oh, that'd be good. So we asked Grossberg, and he said, yeah. 
All this stuff is gross, Berg. The lightsaber, se- well, the bong saber sequence, I should say, so as to avoid a lawsuit, may not be as uh, pimp as it was in episode one, but uh, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. For what you know, for what it is, it's pretty for sweet. What it is, it's pretty sweet. It's better than the lightsaber fight that uh, you know Ben Kenobi and Darth Vader had. In Star I think it's Wars. better than Spaceballs too. Oh, it's, it beats Spaceballs. Yeah, yeah. you got to give me that much. That was oh, a joke a little, that was, uh, wasn't added for Mark. This part was, this line, but in the script, before we knew Mark was going to be playing Cockknocker's hand, did get cut All right, off. that's it. I am out of here. Chaka, I'll be in my trailer. <laughs> I, I just can't believe this movie's already ending. Well, it just flies by. I mean, how can you sit there and talk about the lightsaber sequence for hours? I feel bad. I mean, it's the last commentary of a viewless universe movie that we'll ever do. Well, not really. Well, it'll be... Uh, well, it's the last new viewless universe movie that we'll ever do a commentary for, and I just feel like we haven't really touched on anything, but it, the movie just kind of smokes. The movie speaks for itself. It really does. <laughs> There's not much to say about it. Is a little guy and a fat guy running around, putting on funny outfits and yeah. maintaining that they're not gay. It was a frame-up, Jay. Is, look at that performance right there. What? A frame-up? <laughs> Would you frame me? <laughs> because, because why? <laughs> the inner, yeah. the inner muse. It's, yeah, that's the inner muse talking. <laughs> How was it uh, kissing? Not just Shannon, nice. but like kissing on screen. Oh, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's nice. For you. I thought I was worried about getting a hard on. I didn't know. Did you get a hard on? No. Do you have one now? Yes. Okay. Um. Was that because I'm in spanking on the table? Let's have those diamonds, Justice. I can't do that, sissy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again because uh, the more I do it, the more I'll get laid. But I think my lady did a really good job for never having acted nice. before. My wife's got no interest in acting, but she really wanted to play around if we were going to be out there making a movie for that long. And I thought she stepped up to the table. Speaking of table, she flips. I love her. They do good rolls forward while she Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, that, that's I was throwing the muffins the and bananas all over the floor. Oh, yeah, the tables, yeah. It's kind of a madcap action sequence. Yeah. That's a CG shot. There's shit happening everywhere. Um, I love this right here. Why? I lo- no, I just like uh, this when they're trying to. Are you kidding me? Trying to fight? What do you love? No, Articulate. Say, what do you love? When, <laughs> when they talk about their different uh, styles. Uh-huh. How about a little bitch? My man ain't your baby's daddy. That's funny too. Huh? Bring it on. That, that was the little line on. I added later. I mean, for all they do is straight up fuck. Was that from Bring It On? <laughs> that <laughs> line was in a, in a nod to Eliza's performance of Bring It On. And then I got an email from the screenwriter of Bring It On who thought the movie, she said, I thought the movie was hysterical and I especially loved that that line. Wow. Holy shit, what the fuck are you guys doing here? I like that moment right there, the cutaway to them. and Guns blazing. Guns blazing. Um, I could, I would have enjoyed doing a whole movie about the, the girls running around shooting shit, guns blazing. Yeah, got girls with guns blazing. Yeah, oh, the man, movie. That's crazy. Uh, that's the blunt cave there, sort of. You never really get a good shot at it, but the blunt mobile. Yeah, yeah. That's the we're leaning against the blunt mobile. I mean, it, was, it didn't figure prominently in the movie. It was just something that Rat really wanted to build. At one point, we weren't even going to do it. No. But Rat found a cheap way to build it, and he really wanted to do it. So we said, go nuts. Fucking, we stole a monkey, we got shot at, and I got punched in the motherfucking... We're wearing gloves, too. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great delivery. By a guy named Cockknocker. Paid me a shitload of money for Blunt Man and Chronic. So uh, we had a hard time doing the scene because all three of us were having a hoot. Yeah, and, we were uh, all. It was really everyone else who wasn't us wanted to go home. Yeah, it was really late at night, and, and you guys were like yucking it up like a couple, bunch of frat boys. We were having a real uh, chuckle fest. Basis, but also obviously the character basis for your. Uh, this took me a while to nail. Little speech. Yeah, it took a while. Much like if you watch the chasing Amy outtakes, he. Um, Grows frustrated and screams fuck a couple of times. Same thing. 
It's tough. It's tough to memorize that dialogue. Particularly, that's a, quite a mouthful. When you're doing like 96 other things, answering a lot of questions and whatnot. Yeah, hey, look, right. man. You know. I, yeah, Excuses. You know, Excuses. Just some <laughs> Excuses. Um, we're we're speeding toward the close, so we should pr- try to get in any other thoughts that you might have had uh, anywhere. You. You said you can't take it back. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. I'd say I wait. We'll wait till the credits to do thanks and stuff. You did a hell of a fucking speech. Oh, I wasn't there. fishing for compliments, but thank you. Um, anyone in the cast you didn't like? Um. No, I liked everyone. I enjoyed it. I, everyone was really nice, cool, fun. The girls really liked you. Funny. Nobody gave you any play, though. No, I no. know. I didn't get any ass from Ali or Eliza. <laughs> or, or my wife, thank oh, God. Oh, yeah, well, your wife and Shannon had a fiancé, so... All right. So that she don't count either, but Eliza and Allie are single, and they wouldn't even give me no ass. What about Tango? Tango was I think they were too busy trying to, you know... <clears throat> Memorize their lines and shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. They were being too busy being professional. Yeah. I can get your back. Uh-huh. <laughs> Holy shit, the cross, we gotta get out. You really did bring your A game, boy. I give you nothing but credit. Marshall. You did step Thanks. up to the plate. Yeah. You did, there should be an award for you somewhere. Yeah. You step up there. to the plate award. Auto- I'm going to go home and make you a little trophy. Nice. Because it's <laughs> that's take an old bully <laughs> trophy. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> just shave off the arms or something. No, just fucking cut it off, put the J on top. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will give you a J. When we get home, I'm giving you a J action figure, and that will be your trophy. When's, it, when's the new uh, Blood Man and Chronicles? They'll be out. When this figure. comes out, they'll be out. Oh, see yeah. that, everyone? And you can get them at J and Sound Pop Secret Station, Red Bank, New Jersey, 35 Broad. Comic book stores everywhere across this great land of ours. Um, I would like to point out that uh, you opened a movie. Some people can't do that. You opened a movie. This movie opened to 11 million bucks, and it was you. You know, nobody else. You opened a picture. If people were going to see this movie at all, it was because of you. So you've got an $11 million opening, uh, you know, under your belt, man. Yep. Yeah. Sweet. That's pretty good. And you. And you. Um, no, not me. You yeah, know. <laughs> I give you Nobody you all, went because of me. Mm-mm. Well, Moji's parents went because of Moji. Yeah. Yeah. No, they went to the premiere. They saw it for free. <laughs> Fucking bastards. But yeah, on the strength of uh, you, you, you opened a picture. That's, uh, that's impressive. Not many people can do that. All these kids are here. Oh, yeah. Tongue. I'm telling you, there was lots, lots of tongue going on between I these I just kept telling her, listen, I don't want to uh, tongue kiss she kept doing it. Yeah. She's dedicated. <clears throat> yeah, she's she's she really is. She's one of the most professional actors I've ever met. She's all about the work. She had a little wet in the pants, though. So. Regardless of what you what? When we were every, both times, every time we'd kiss, she'd get wet in the pants. <laughs> like I said, very professional, <laughs> also apparently very wet in the pants. See, look at I mean, that. look at that. Lots of mashing. Yeah, lots of tongue. There's her fiancé in the background. Complaining. Hating you. <laughs> Just stop macking on my girl. He's trying to hire those two guys. He's like, and if that motherfucker balls. says anything derogatory on the commentary, I'm going to kick him in the balls. <laughs> Did you see us in the background? In that one shot? Me and Lee just watching. There's Bob Chapman carrying that cross beam, which was a nod to... Uh, Stuff we did back in Mall Rant. Bob Chapman, graffiti designs, makes uh, fine shirts like the two that uh, Lee and uh, Muse are wearing. And the action figures, too. Right? And the action figures, that baggy hat, that movie hat. You could buy anything that you see in this movie. Cause, uh, it's interactive. Just point on the, your TV. Yeah, and, tap and, you your know. TV, and it will take you to a place where you can buy the stuff. Yeah, I, I, I have no problem whoring out the merchandise, as long as people like buying it there for him. You know, with all the money we're making, man, we could buy a lot of plane tickets. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I said it before, I'm going to say it again, I can't believe this movie's over already. Um, and we did, a, we did a video for this song right here, yes, Stroke Nine. Yes, kick some ass, Stroke Nine. And Afro Man. And Afro Man, which you hear mm-hmm. at the end, during the credits. Fuck Jay and Silent Bob. People love this sequence. Talk about the internet now, man. Now I can, I know, because like yeah. before I never got to talk about the internet. So well remembered. Yeah, uh, a lot of internet uh, stuff in this movie, because I, I spent a lot of time on the internet. And, and it was a very cathartic movie, because you get to make fun of all the people that make fun of you on the internet. Because you know they're all just like 11 years old. 
And if they're not actually 11 years old, they behave like 11 year olds on the on the internet. And I behave like an 11 year old professionally, but I get paid for it. There's some people with enough free time to behave like 11 year olds on the internet without getting paid for it in their free time. So the movie kind of made fun of them. Um, and this was uh, this is a strong close to the movie. A little homage to Dogma right there. <laughs> Pummeling a bunch of religious <laughs> Clergy. people. That's Ralph. Location Locations manager. Locations man, Ralph. We threw him into the picture. And we just want to say to his daughter that she should think that he's a cool guy. Yeah, especially for this. I mean, look at that cool performance. Guy. He's own, he owns it. This was a man, Dave Mandel, co-creator of the Clerks cartoon. His favorite moment in the movie. He thought that joke was so long that it was hysterical. He said the only way it could have been better is if it was longer. 20 seconds longer with us just standing there. <laughs> Uh, this shot of the El Rey Theater in Los Angeles on Santa Monica, yes. And this is, uh, was it Santa Monica? No, it was in um, Wilshire, sorry. Wilshire. Mr. L.A. It's not really a town, but. Um, it, uh, it, uh, it was uh, packed with a bunch of fans from the website. Yep. We solicited for fans from the website. Hey, Steve Dan Walt, they came back. Brian Trish, Johnson, Walt dish. Flanagan. Uh, there's a return right there from uh, Joey Renee Adams Humphrey. and uh, Renee Humphreys. This was a, r a fantastic night because it was it kind was of like a high school reunion. Mm -hmm. And the silly thing is we never took one big group shot because that would have been great, real viewers universe group shot. No, it was, it was a big mistake. It was, it was Morris Day and, and a big reunion of all of us. Yeah, it was, it was a party and a half. Yeah. Dwight Yule coming back as Hooper. This sequence got cut a little bit here, um, which you can find it in the cut sequence. Um, but it got cut because of the MPA. They didn't like what Dwight said following his last line here. But you can see it in the cut stuff. But I just have to say, Blunt Man and Chronic was Blunt I think this is the first thing we shot with Shannon. No, no, no. We shot her in the car. Or pulling out of the hotel. That's right. That's right. Was, yeah, that's, you know, really? Is that the very yeah, first time? Yeah, that's the very first time we shot. We have to dance with Morris Day. Morris Day in the time. Anyone who's ever seen Purple Rain, you know who this gentleman and his crew are. Morris Day in the time. Sure. Radface had tried to build a replica of... Uh, the um, stage from Purple Rain. So the backdrop is very similar to the one in uh, Purple Rain. Once again, Dave with the lighting Dave setup. Dave Morton. Dave Morton with the big ass Let's thank uh, Laura Greenlee. Hey, that guy in the background um, behind us, Malcolm Ingram, reprising a role that he played in Mallrats, just standing there. The standing, specialist. creepy staring guy. Laura Greenlee, without whom none of us really would have got anything done. Who was the co-producer? Uh, thank Bob and Harvey. Bob and Harvey. Much, but I just have to say, Blunt Man and Chronic was Blunt. And I think this is the first thing we shot with Shannon. No, no, no. We shot her in the car. Or pulling out of the hotel. That's right. That's right. Was, yeah. That's, you know, really? Is that the very? Yeah, first that's time? the very first thing we shot. We got the dancer more stay in the time. Anyone who's ever seen Purple Rain. You know who this gentleman and his crew are. More stay in the time. Sure. Radface had tried to build a replica of uh, the um, stage from Purple Rain. So the backdrop is very similar to the one in uh, Purple Rain. Once again, Dave with the lighting Dave setup. Morton. Dave Morton with the big ass Let's thank uh, Laura Greenlee. Hey, that guy in the background. Um, behind us Malcolm Ingram reprising a role that he played in Mallrats just standing there just standing specialist. creepy staring guy Laura Greenlee without whom none of us really would have got anything done who was the co-producer uh, thank Bob and Harvey Bob and Harvey and, uh, who, who uh, said go ahead make your movie make your little yes, fan movie thank you Bob and John Gordon thank you Harvey thank you John Gordon my cell phone sorry um Here's a big shout out to the cast that we're rolling through right now. Yeah. We gave them all single card credits. Jason Lee. Will Jason Lee gets two. Um, I didn't get a single, dude. You did too? Well, you shared no, it with no. me. Yeah, well, what's up? You well, got because we're a team. Contract. We're a team. I I didn't, I you want to be apart from me? You want to be separated? No, I don't, but contract... Oh, there's a, they got a dual, dual card. That so, was a pain in the ass. Get dual card for them, though. 
We wanted to be together. Let's try. I don't know. You sound like you're trying to. You just said everyone had their own car, and I said, "Well, I didn't." I, I want to thank the whole audience. Yeah, that came audience out that was night effing, were awesome. Effing phenomenal, or fucking phenomenal, as we say here in Jersey. This is a little outtake, a little taste of the outtakes. Yeah. Jersey, and she's like, "Oh, I've read on the internet these guys are a couple little fuckholes." <laughs> Oh, so oh much good times were had by <laughs> all. Wow. Uh, this was kind of a dream come true, getting up there and dancing Would you say the that this was a, a bigger, like, the word lightsaber is Morris Day, if you had to rank one above the other? If I had to pick other. the two, that's tough. Um, that's tough. There's Malcolm in the background. I don't know. I'd say they were neck and neck, the lightsaber fight and uh, dancing with the time. Because it puts you immediately into, you know, two of your favorite movies of all time. Sure. You know, the Star Wars saga and Purple Rain. Of, of, of my two personal well, favorites? Nah, I don't know about you, but for me. Uh, Jamie, again, we, as we said before, without whom the, the movie wouldn't look nearly as good. Did an amazing as job. Did an amazing job. Did a job. Look at those two editors. Oh, they were great. Oh. Uh, Ratface, another bit of uh, amazing job. Shannon's Brad comedy Paul. there. Jim Venable. Now we're just basically reading. Now yeah, screen. really. I mean, God. you could do this yourselves. Uh, but yeah, we should point out the audience like you did before. They yeah, were they were great. amazing. They was, were. They really. I mean, I, and I'm not blowing smoke up anybody's ass. They that, they made it fun. I was dreading this day. EC, our EC. custom person. Um, I was dreading shake shooting this day. Though. Yeah, you shake your ass. Yeah. I thought you were farting. Uh, so Steve Sheeks, we can owe her a big shout out. Sheeks pulled together the cast that wasn't. You like that? Yeah, that's genius. Forever insane. young. Makes me fucking. Um, Sheeks pulled together that cast that we didn't bring back with us. Yeah, and everybody. that was kind of important. Now I could literally just read everybody's name and just start saying thank you. Um, big thanks to everybody. Everybody's names going by. Tim Bird, the AD, Sue oh, McNamara. Yeah, let me take some time off to talk about Tim Bird. Tim Bird was was a phenomenal AD. Tim Bird practically directed this movie. Tim and Mosier directed this movie. Me, I just made goofy faces. And he's a really good guy. Yeah. He's a wonderful AD. If you're, if you're, if you need an AD, get yourself a Tim, Tim Bird. Bird. Get a Tim Bird, or get the Tim Bird. Yeah. Shout uh, out to Sue McNamara. Oh, Sue, of course. Shout out to to uh, Monica Hampton. Monica Post Hampton. Also Scott's third film. Lady Woman. Uh, Everyone at Skywalker Sound, especially Phil Benson. Who Phil Benson, the unsung hero of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Without Phil, uh, the movie's not nearly as good as it is. Phil, Phil, aside from all the technical stuff he brought in and helped me put together those internet, internet trailers, trailers. Um, Phil was just a great guy to have in the back of the editing room to show stuff to. Because me and Mosier edit the movie and we show each other. And sometimes you need that third opinion or the outside opinion. Somebody to be like, somebody is like, stupid. Stupid. yeah, it's like you're both retarded. All of it sucks. <laughs> and that was Phil. So uh, we're gonna keep Phil around. Um, well, I want to thank he's Donald a keep and Zach. You gotta get Donald Do it in the mic. mic. That'd probably be better. Donald and Zach, especially Donald, who drove my ass around a lot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Donald. Gotta uh, thank uh, Gary Rizzo and Tom Myers are our mixers. Our, our Skywalker guys. All these companies that are flashing by right now, all of these, the CGI companies, there was a bunch of them. We didn't really focus on any one, but no, there was I'm a bunch of them. Kevin fucking Smith, man, who wrote this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah they're giving they're us nice. all a fucking job. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Putting wow. food on Everyone the table. Yeah, you know. No, it's my pleasure. Um, I give my I give my props to you early on. You you were an absolute champion. You really came through. There were days before this movie was made where we didn't think we were gonna be able to make it mm -hmm. um, because of you. But man, you fucking you came. You brought the thunder, Charlie. We gotta give Charlie Charlie a big Larnett, thanks. Charlie, special Charlie, effects, Larnally, special Vincent Guastini. Guastini did all the prosthetics. makeup prosthetics. The big Jerry fist. Jensen, who our stunt coordinator, who finally had people flying around doing all that stuff, did an amazing job. Taylor and Patty in the hair and makeup department. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, but so you, of course, Moj. Without you, there is no movie. 
I mean, now it just sounds like we're sucking each other's dicks, but <laughs> which which we <laughs> practically are, yeah. and we will once those credits. Birds and animals unlimited. Birds and animals unlimited. We forgot the birds part because that's very important. The birds part. They do more than. Oh, just don't forget fucking Malcolm Ingram and Schiffer. Malcolm and Ingram and Gail Stanley. Documentary. Gail, who uh, yeah. my intrepid uh, assistant, I hesitate to call her assistant as much as she's the person that just runs my life. Oh yeah, yeah, Gail Rock. And gave birth to my wife. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. props for it's that. It's a big yeah. one-two punch. That's just true. Love Gail. Um, Whit Norris. Whit, the, the unsung, the real, real Sounder. unsung hero, because he records all the dialogue, and since the Which, movies tend to be very dialogue heavy, mostly what it is. Yeah, that's that's kind of very important. Uh, you're listening right now to the Afro, Afro Man. Man. Yeah, this song was huge. Huge. I got to, uh, I don't even know if he's new, I get to introduce him. I heard this. Powerhouse 106, I got to introduce him on stage. How was that? And they showed a clip of the movie, like a real long uh, trailer there. Matt and Jane were the other two folks from the scooby yeah. scene. There you go. We should have watched this first. I don't know. The credits and <laughs> the movies. <laughs> yeah, really. And then <laughs> familiarize ourselves with it. I didn't even get to watch the movie this time because we were so busy talking. Oh, Brian Johnson. Is Brian Johnson Joey? Look at all those stunt Lost people. Lost you know, you fu- look at that. It takes up the whole screen. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of stunts. There's a shitload of stunts. Yeah, but um, it was me.